We'll be learning a piece, the first piece of the Parashat Ki Aleph. So let's go. Ki Tetzeh La Mirchama. Okay, it's a quote for the Pasuk. The Pasuk says, Ki Tetzeh La Mirchama Lo Yevecha Untano Hashem Lokecha Biyadecha Veshavita Shivyo Veraita Yefa Toar when you go to war against your enemies, Hashem gives you you, 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 you win the war, basically you wage, you, wage, you wage the war against the enemies and you win the war. And you saw one of the soldiers, or whatever, how many, how many were there were, they saw a beautiful girl, a beautiful, a beautiful girl, Kenanit, Hittit, Hemorait, whatever they were, there were seven nations. And as they were, well, actually, it's not, not seven nations, um, other, other nations, not seven nations, not the seven nations. I will, I will explain why. But they, you see, in the middle of the war, and you see a beautiful, beautiful lady. So you say, I don't want to kill her. I don't want to kill her. So I'll, I'll take her as a prisoner, and I'll marry her. That's what you call Yefat Torah. The beautiful girl, right? Now, the Torah gives you permission to do that. Even though you're married yourself. We're talking about you're, you're married with another 10 children, 15, 20 children, whatever it is. And you say, oh, you know something, I'm in the middle of the war, and you say, I want to see this, I, this girl is a really nice girl, whatever, I want to marry her. So there's no ta'alikh of what the, the, the Pasuk says, or what the Torah says, or what you should do, but the Torah l- lets you do that, which is a pele. It's a pele. The Torah, if you notice... And if you notice in the Gemara, you notice how the, the, the Torah talks about over there, it says that you're not allowed, you, you, you're not to look at, to, at a woman. It says, what the Pasuk says, it says, You can't, you can't do excessive, you know, excessive, you know, things which normally we shouldn't be doing. The, the Torah is very very sensitive kivyachol to all the um all, all the pritzot that might take place all the licentiousness that might might take place in 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 in, your, in one's life so nevertheless the torah over here says it's mutam question is why what happened there amruzal the second second line now right bemilchemet the Sifri said like this, Chazal said like this, Be'milchemet reshut ha'katu medaber. Over here, the, in this week's parasha, it says, Ki tesel ha'milchama, when you go to war, which war are we talking about? We're talking about the war, reshut. If you, if you want to wage war, if you want, there's no tzivoy from a Baruchu, Baruchu never commanded you to do such a thing. Who commanded us, Amisael, Yehoshua, we're going to see now, when they came, when they left the Midbar, the desert, after 40 years being there. So they went into Eretz Israel, they had to conquer the place. Right? They had to conquer the place. So when they, they came to conquer the place, that was a tzivui, that was a commandment from Akadosh Bukhu. Hashem said, Go and, and, and conquer the whole place, the whole Eretz Israel. I promised it to Abraham Avinu and for yourselves as well. Go for it. Okay, so that was Chiyuv. That's what you call Chiyuv, not Reshut. Reshut is permission. You, if you want, if you want, if you want, you can uh, wage war. So when, for example, David Amelech, for example, David Amelech, um, at the time of David Amelech, he also went to war. He waged war against who? In Syria. Further north, when they needed more money, they needed more uh, whatever it was. So they waged war against Syria, against this and that. Yeah, up, not in Eretz, not obviously Eretz was already conquered by by us. But anything extra is called reshut. I mean, if you want, you can go. 
So this is the type of war that we're talking about. When you go to the war of 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 uh, of um, that, that you want, right? You want to wage war for whatever reason it is. It's not a commandment from a God Buhu. So then there is the whole story of Yefatoa. But when they came to Eretz Israel, right? When they came to Eretz Israel and they waged war against the Eretz and the seven nations. Right? So over, over there, they, there was no Yefatoar, even though they could have easily have captured girls, right? No, they didn't do that. It was a sword. We're going to see, this is what we're going to be talking about now. So again, we're talking about now in the case of a a war which is, has not been commanded by Hashem. Why? The Benichemet Eretz Israel, because the war of Eretz Israel, when they came to conquer Israel, over there says everybody had to be killed. Everybody had to be killed, and the ones who were living in Eretz Israel. We're going to see now, okay? It looks tough, it's very tough. So, Yoshua Binon came with his army, and it is, yeah, the whole the, uh, army Israel, and they came and they waged war for 14, I think 14 years. 14 years. It took 14 years to conquer the whole of Eretz Israel. So over there, how did they conquer? They killed everybody. Men, women, children, there was no prisoners, no prisoners. The Pasuk says, Lo neshama. You shouldn't, nobody should live. Now we're going to see why. We're going to, see, yeah. Vechen pideh shasizal. Yesh makshim. Okay, so this is what the, the introduction for the for the beginning of the show. Yesh makshim. In kol atzma shilifat Torah lo lo hutra Torah elde keneged yetsara. Lama lo hetila katu mitam ze af mechemet chova. So the question like this now. We see there's there's two types of wars. There is a milchemet chova. You are you are obliged. You are, you are, you have to. You're commanded by Hashem to conquer the place, and that's what we call milchemet chova. You have to. And there's a milchemet rashut that we spoke before. If you want to go to war, you can war. That who doesn't command you. You can ask the urim etumim. That's how it needs to be. And they wanted to go to the Spanish team afterwards. They wanted to wage war against them or not. They used to go and ask the Kohen Gadol. The Kohen Gadol had the breastplates and the lights, the the, the, the stones would, would uh, light up. And through that, the Kohen Gadol would understand how to answer, if to go to war or not. Very good. So there's two there's two um, types of wars, Chova and Reshut. So, and the Reshut, the ones of the show that if you want to go to war, over there there is the, pessim- the, the, the permission of taking your fat toll. The permission of taking your fat toll. That you can take. You want you see a beautiful girl and you feel that yeah, you want to marry her, Bakhule. So you can take her for yourself. Why? Because of the Yetzara. It's in order to cool down your Yetzara Kadosh Buhu. Akadosh Baruch Hu understood very well. He made us, and he knows that if one, there must be some psychological um, understanding to this, and very deep as well. That the the person when the person when the when the the, the soldier goes to war, um, and he sees a beautiful girl. I don't know what goes through him. That his yetzara is such that he needs to be with him, with her. It's a, it must be something, yeah, very, very, the Torah says. Now, and because of that, because of that, because of the, of the massive Yetzirah that the person, the soldier is having, so the Torah says, wait, if you want, you bring into your house and the whole thing, right? The whole story over there, the whole, yeah, the, the Torah tells you. You live, you live on the corner and this and the other, you're on the floor, you let her cry for a whole month. And then you see her, they look, she's crying, she's this, the other, whatever girl she is, I forget, I don't want to. 
And if you do, so then you have uh, other issues with it. Um, I think also that David HaMelech, David HaMelech also had Yefat Torah. Should know. Also had Yefat Torah. He also went to Menchem and and he also took Yefat Torah for, for himself. Now, why is that? The reason is because of Yetzara. If that's the case, so then they do the same thing with Menchem and Chova. When you see a lovely girl, don't kill her. You might have Yetzara, so, so, so bring it to your house. Why don't we say the same thing for Milchem and Chovah? Well, we, the same heter, the same permission that we have for, for the war, the permiss- for war of, of Reshut, that you want to go. So do the same thing now for Milchem and Chovah. That's what he asks. That's his, his question now. And many poskim answered in different ways. Uledi Dan, and according to the Zerashim Shon, he's going to answer this question now. Uledi Dan nil elo mal shekashem shaytel shelifat toal b'shal milchamot u keneged yitzara. We have to see this because yes, we have to understand this. The same way as we see, there's a permission. Of Yefat Torah, of having this girl over for you on wars which are not commanded, will not be commanded by Hashem. Who can make it Yetzara? The reason why the, this permission is in order to 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 tranquilize, to balance out, or to yeah, to tranquilize your Yetzara. Kach ha'isur shela. Be'eretz Yisrael, who can I get Yetzirah? The same thing, on the same, on the same path, right? the same way as we see that the reason why we're, we, it was permitted for us to take a a Yefat Torah uh, is because of the Yetzirah that the, that the soldier is having. He has Yetzirah, we're coming down. Here, take her. So too, in Milchemet Chova, which is in Eretz Israel, the chemet of, of that was commanded by Hashem, and that was only for Eretz Israel. Yeah, that, the, all the wars that take, took place in Israel, the isur, the prohibition of taking a yifatol, which means um, you were not allowed to take the yifatol at all. It's a sur for you bichlal. That is also. The fact that you can't take her is also against the Yetzara. That will work. That basically will come and fight the Yetzara that you have as well. Because also you have, it, it, it doesn't mean that in the Milchemet Chova, in the obligatory um, war that you might have, yeah, because of who commanded you, it's Israel, that, that is. What do you think? You're not going to have Yetzirah? Of course you're going to have Yetzirah. So we use it, we, 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 it, it's on a different angle. The, the, we attack the Yetzirah on a different angle. With the, with the Rashut, with the Rashut, right? With the Rashut, so then, um, with Milchemet Rashut, so we bring her in. Milchemet Chova, there is a prohibition, and that prohibition of taking her is in order to weaken the Yetzara. How? This is what he's going to explain now. So let's go to second chapter again. Ule Didan. Nir Elomar. Shekeshem Shaitel Shayefat Toar. Beshar Milchamot. Who can I get Yetzara? Kacha Isur Shela. But it's Israel. Who can I get Yetzara? We have to deal with Yetzara in both wars. And the, bo- and the, and the war of of um, Reshot, which is permi- yeah, permissible war, that you can go whenever, if you want to go, right? According to, yeah. So that you, have, you, you can take the Yetzara. Yeah, sorry, you can take the Yefat Torah in order to fight the Yetzara. And also, with the Milchemet, Chova, you also have to fight, fight the Yetzara. But over here, the fact that you're not allowed to take her, 
will come and weaken the Yetzirah. How? We're going to see now. Omnam, however, hai kedeita ve hai kedeita. Sh'are noda sh'yehoshua sh'alach sh'losha peruz dagmaot. Arotzeh le'ashlim y'ashlim. What happened is like this. The, the, it brought down in Bereshit Abba, in Be'ikar Barabah, he says like this. He says that when Yehoshua be known, he wanted to wage war against all the seven nations commanded by Hashem. So before, before he went to war, he used to go and send a letter, an email, a WhatsApp, whatever you want to call it, and send a me- a me- through messengers. He used to sell, he used to send a messenger, a message to all of them and say, we're going to go and conquer you. If you want to do peace, you're welcome. Come, do peace with us, and we won't kill you. If you want to go and you want to do war, but then I go war, then we go for, we go for the war. That's how Yoshua would warn them before, before the war, before the war. That's what he says, Harotzei le'ashlim yashlim, anybody who wants to do peace, so Bechav, do peace with us. If you want to do war, so we'll do war. And when war comes, so then Am Yisrael would kill everybody, would kill everybody without, without any exception. As I said before, men, wife and, uh, women and children. Upishu mefashim, shekodem atchalat ha-milchama, before, the mefashim say that before, the war, before the war conquering Eretz Israel, lo ayu bichla lo tehiyeh kol neshama. Over there, yeah. So over there, um, there, there was still they still did not have a they still did not have a um, mitzvah of killing everybody in in uh, in Eretz Israel. Those of the seven nations. There was that lot was not hovering over them, so to speak. And that's the reason why Yoshua Binon, I ask you a question. You know that Yoshua Binon, he was the leader after Moshe Abenu passed away. So Yoshua Binon took over, he became the leader of Am Israel. And he, before becoming the leader, he was sent as a spy to Eretz Israel. And over there, he met Rachav Hazana. Rachav was a, a, a very big prostitute. So the Gemara says, yeah, incredible things about it, but yeah, a big, massive prostitute. Everybody was with her. And Yoshua Binon, Later on, married her. And the question is like this. If we know that you have to kill everybody, men, women, and children, so how come is it Yoshua married um, Rachav Azana? How did, how did he marry somebody who was supposed to die in the war? Everybody, should, People would have killed her anyway. The answer to that is because we see from the story that Rachav Hazana wanted to do peace. She was the one who helped Yoshua. Because she helped Yoshua be known, right? And Kalevin Yufune, we see that what? That Arosel Ashlim Yashlim. And therefore, she made a little a siman of, of a white sheet outside the window. And the, the, the soldiers of Am Yisrael understood that, 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 that the house we do not touch. And all the whole family was inside, and they were saved. They all got saved. So we see from here that anybody who did peace with Am Yisrael before the war, so then they wouldn't have any um, the, uh, any issues, right? If they if they wanted to wage war, so then there was a mitzvah of Am Yisrael. Lo techayek on neshama. You have to yeah kill everybody. Aval otam shelo yishlimo, but those. Of those, of those seven nations that did not want to do peace, call them Shitchil Yoshua Michama. Before Yoshua did the, the, the war, Ketiv Beo Lotechayekoneshama. 
over there, we see that the Pasuk says in the Torah, Lo techaye kol neshama, over there you do not let anybody live, you kill everybody. If they don't want to do teshuvah, Incoming. if they don't want to do teshuvah, or they want to, yeah, they want to uh, do peace with Am Israel, so they would all die. Okay, now, so basically what we're saying here is that Yoshua bin Nun will give a warning. Okay, that's basically this this paragraph basically says Yoshua would come and give a warning first. They don't want to take the warning, so they get the Makkah. The Atam, you know, third paragraph. The Atam al Sarih Lomar. And the reason for this, we have to say, Shakibuhu Rata Lehorot, Isail, Shota Aresa Tova, Inaihu La Lisbon, and Ashim Rain the Khataim. Why is it that Hashem told Yoshua, yeah, Yoshua was coming, would come and send a, a warning shot, would give a warning shot to every single nation, yeah, every single, every place that you would go and conquer, you would give the warning, yeah, send, send those, those messengers. Why? What for? To teach you, to teach you, Lehorot, to teach you, Leisael, to Amisael, to the Goyim, that land, Eretz Israel, the land that we're in now, yeah, I'm in now, that land, this land, cannot take, cannot take people who are evil and sinners. They can't take it. Eretz Israel itself is what you call Eretz Kedosha. And therefore, if there are nations like the seven nations of, of yeah, those seven nations did not have schut to be there anymore. So evil, and therefore out they want. So they didn't have any any takana, any you couldn't fix anything unless they did teshuva. In other words, if the, the Chitim, Haimoraim, the Kenanim, right? All these nations, the seven nations, if they would do Teshuvah, and that's the whole idea of, of that, if they would come and do Teshuvah, so then you would say, yes, fine, Yoshua would come and bring them in. And that's the idea. Because if Am Israel, right? Am Israel understood from this process that, that Yoshua would come and and ask yeah, and, and, and warn the other nations of the world, um, the, the, the other nations of, of, uh, that, that were living in Eretz Israel, you want to do Teshuvah? So Am Israel would hear all this, and you understand the word that Eretz Israel is only for people who will keep the mitzvot. If those who don't keep the mitzvot, so you're not, you're not part of it, and therefore you're out. She'achal kach, after that, once, once they start the war, they can't say, oh, no, we'll do Teshuvah now. Too late. Too late. But Teshuvah can only be done before. Where do you know? And we also see in the Pasuk. And we see that the Pasuk says, and you will very quickly, very quickly you will be perish. You will perish very quickly from this good land, which is Eretz Israel. So we see that um, when Am Israel, we talk about Am, Am Israel, and the same thing applies to the rest of, of the, the, the nations as well. When we don't behave properly, so then the, the, the land, the land vomits us. It's his chut. It's a big schut to be an anti Israel. Uh, it could be that you're not doing Averot, but you don't have the, the merits, right? You have to have a certain merit to come to Eretz Israel. It's not Pashut. The, the, the land of Eretz Israel, the, the, um, the air of Eretz Israel, the air that we breathe, says the Gemara, that we become cleverer when we, when we breathe the air of Eretz Israel, which is Pele. But him, you can, you can see, yeah, you, uh, uh, 
right, everybody's, the Jews in general are all very clever. The Jews in Eretz Israel are cleverer, oh, <laughs> maybe. So anyway, so, V'chein haya b'Yisrael, we're now in the second column. V'chein haya b'Yisrael, shelo shamu lekol ha-nevi'im, u'bata alehem ha-ra'a. The same happened to Am Yisrael. Over the, yeah, during, the, during the, the following generations coming, as, yeah, in the times of Bet HaMidash, ולא שמעו לכל הנביאים, they did not listen to the voice of the prophets, or the נביאים. Because of that, yeah, they do teshuvah, do teshuvah. בעת עליהם הרע, because of that, or the, 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 bad, the decree came over upon them. And basically what? Eris Israel threw them out. The Bet HaMidash were destroyed, and Eris Israel threw them out. They're out in Galut. Why do we have this hut now? I don't know. I don't know. It's uh, part and parcel of, of, the, of the Geula, I suppose. Uh, you would probably say to me, wait, but there's many, many Chilonim who are in the Eretz Israel, right? Um, and, and they are not uh, sometimes, or people, the people here, they're not so nice. So why, why are they here in Eretz Israel? There shouldn't be an Israel according to this. The answer to this, right, I think is when the whole of Am Israel is not behaving properly, or Rov, or, or majority of the people are not behaving properly. If the majority of the people are not behaving properly, so then, 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 then it becomes tough. Then Eretz Israel will throw them out, Am Israel. So in time, you know, we have this chutz of we have this chutz of of Eretz uh, Israel of, of the learning of Torah, of Chasadim that we do. Even the Chilonim, they also do Chesed. They, they might be sinners, but not Raim. Might be sinners, but not wicked. They might not be. Yeah, they 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 still okay. Pachototen in terms of that there is a certain um, there's a certain there's a certain um, Schota they still have. You can't say that they are totally bad. So that's why they're still here. And then it's Israel. Belachem. Okay, so we still haven't answered. Why is, we had a question. Why is it that in Milchem et in the in the war that we could go to war, right? So that's, it wasn't commanded by Hashem. It wasn't commanded by Hashem. Uh, we could go to Syria and start waging war against Lebanon, against Syria, against Egypt, whatever it was. That was done. That was uh, that was commanded by by the king David Hamelech, whatever he was. He would ask the permission, obviously. That is the shoot, and that because of that, the shoot you can take a yefat Torah, a beautiful girl, and take take her into your house, etc. But Milchemet Chova. But the wage, waging war of the command, commanded by Hashem, right, which is basically conquering Eretz Yisrael, that, that was in the times of Yosho Vinun, that you couldn't take a, uh, what do you call this, a um, Yifat Torah. You couldn't take Yifat Torah. And the question is, why not? If it's for the Yetzirah, the reason why you, you have to, you take a, a Yifat Torah, a beautiful girl, is in order to, uh, Tranquilize your yetzara that you have your your evil your evil evil inclination, and then you you want to calm and calm yourself down. So the Torah says, "I know the nefesh adam, and you're permitted only for milchemet harishut, milchemet chova. You're not allowed. Why not? This the same. This the same uh, logic. So it's going to explain now. Velachem. Asra HaTorah. And therefore, Asra HaTorah, the Torah prohibited Alehem, on Am Yisrael, Ayyifat Torah b'michemet Eretz Yisrael. Those who wage war against Eretz Yisrael, they had to conquer Eretz Yisrael. That was, it was Asur. Totally prohibited to, to take this beautiful girl. Leharot, why? Leharot lahem, to teach Am Yisrael, Davar Zeh, Sheyeh Lahem Lemofet Neged Ayet Zara, 
שלא יעכבה מלעשות תשובה קודם שיחתם גזל דינם. In other words, the reason why it's אסור for you to take the, the יפת תואר in, in, in the war of ארץ ישראל is to teach us דבר זה שיהיה להם למופת, it should be a summing or a special סימן, נגד, against the יצרה, שלא יעכבה מנסה, you shouldn't, you shouldn't um, make a delay, you should not delay from doing תשובה, קודם שיחתם נגד גזל דינם, before the גזל דינם of, of the כנענים would come upon them. after the, 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 um, the um, warning shot of Yehoshua Binun on these seven nations. So basically like this. The Chayal, the soldier, would, would, would know that there was, that there was certain messengers being sent to this Uh, nation, yeah, say for example the Canaanim, right? So the Canaanim was, was sent over there. Now the Chayal also see, understands that if they don't do Teshuvah, if they don't do Teshuvah, so they, they, he will have to kill everybody. So he understands already at that point that Eretz Israel, like we said before, if you, if you, if you're Chote, if you're a sinner, you're out of here. If you do Teshuvah and you're, you do all the mitzvot in Eretz Yisrael, you, you're welcome. You have said that Ishmael, who gives you the Baracha, etc. Shelo yaakve milasot shuvah kodem shiachtam gezad dinam. And therefore the soldier himself, the soldier himself would understand that the whole process of, of, the, of this warning to the, to the, uh, to, to the, uh, To, to the place where you want to conquer, the nation that you want to conquer, the Kena'anim. Such a person, such a, such a um, soldier would understand that there's no room for Yetzirara in Eretz Israel. The fact that you're coming to Eretz Israel is a place which is Kadosh, which is holy, and therefore That in itself, the fact that you're coming to Israel and conquering the place, and there's a warning shot to the other side, be careful, do teshuvah, etc. All of that would weaken the Yetzirah, would be able to, and, and the Chayal, the, the soldier, would come and, and wage the war against, and, and against those nations. He would then truly understand that he's coming to Israel to Makom Kadosh, to a holy place. And such a place, there's no room for Yetzirah. So all that process would help him fight the Yetzirah. And therefore he wouldn't have, he wouldn't fall into the trap so quickly. Let's put it that way. With Melchemet HaRishot, with Melchemet HaRishot, with a, a, um, going to Syria, for example, or going to Lebanon or, or, or Egypt, whatever it is, or Jordan, and to wage war against that, like, like David HaMelech used to do, that is... You're going to a place where there's not Eretz Israel, there's no Kodesh, there's no Kedusha, and therefore the, the process is a different process. There was no warning shots. They will come and, and conquer the place. And therefore the, the person, the Chayal, would not be um, um, in tune to what, yeah, to, to fight the Yitzhak, and the Yitzhak would be on a greater level in those, in those wars. Share. as we see before, שהרי גם הרשעים חושבים לעשות תשובה, אבל אומרים שיש להם זמן. We see that what, that many times you have to be, you have to be very careful, with the Yetzirah, you have to be very careful. Why? The Yetzirah says, tomorrow, tomorrow. You want to do teshuvah? Tomorrow. You want to wake up early in the morning for tefillah? Tomorrow. You want to put tzitzit on? Tomorrow. Why not? You want to change? Tomorrow. Everything tomorrow. And then you have time, we have time. Baruch Hashem, I'm only 30, I'm only 50. I'm only 60 or 70 now. We have Baruch Hashem, I still have time. The Yetzirah always pushes the idea of doing Teshuvah, always. And, that, and, and this idea of the warning shots 
that Yehoshua Binon, those messengers he would send over to the Hayalim, to the, to the other nation, yeah, to the Canaanim, for example. So then the, those, they would see themselves that they had to do Teshuvah, and there was no room for um, extending the time. It was, are you do Teshuvah now or not? So that, that all of that helped the the soldier to do to to understand that Eretz Israel is a Makom Kadosh, and therefore, in order to be able to fight the Yetzirah, and therefore he wouldn't have Yetzirah. He he wouldn't have the 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 as big of a Yetzirah as in the other worlds. Why? Because all of this process would help him. Um, Understand that there's no room for this, and not only that, but you have to kill her. There's no room to take her, so to speak. And if you, you will see now, if you take her, others would come and kill her. So there's no, there's no room to to actually, you know, think about anything else. Well, excuse me. So yes, sure. in in general, when one is um, obligated, when it's a mitzvah chova, like, for example. A man to put on tefillin, or a man to sit in the sukkah. The yetsara is greater when something's obligatory than when something's not. Ah, so therefore you, and, and, and therefore what? And therefore, do you mean the commandment of the war is also stronger? So, trying to understand why it isn't stronger there. It is stronger. But but the, the process of what Yoshua would do and what the, the, the Chayim would understand from this and El Israel, the El Kodesh, that that process would come and fight the Yetzirah, so to speak. It's not it's it's not like, for example, um, when you go into the into into the Sukkah, for example. So you're not doing a process in order to fight the Yetzirah, even though you have Yetzirah. Maybe don't go, do, don't do this mitzvah. You have, you have to do something in order to fight it. For example, um, um, I'll give you the, the, the example of the sota. It's not exactly the same thing, but just the idea. Um, the sota. Sota is the rebellious lady that would, that would behind his uh, husband's um, back, he would go, she would go with somebody else. And the husband would uh, suspect her. She, he would go with her to the Bet Hamidash and say, "Look, I suspect this my my wife uh, of being with somebody else. She hid this, herself behind this and that. I I want her to drink. I want her to drink the um, bitter waters, right? The whole process. And she, yeah, she would drink it. Say, so for example, she did Davida. So says the Torah." she would explode. Her whole belly would explode, everything would explode. Now, says Rashi over there, that somebody would come and see. So, yeah, the people around in the Bet Hamidash, it wasn't done in closed closed doors, uh, the Kohen and her. No, it was done in front of everybody. And she would come and drink. If she would, if she did the Avera, and she would drink it, yeah, so then she would explode. And anybody seeing this, says Rashi, he would have to also um, remove himself from drinking wine. The question is, why do you have to remove yourself from drinking wine? Isn't it enough that you see that somebody has been exploded, that somebody exploded, right? Or also you see somebody being exploded, that, that in itself should be a, a warning shot for you to understand, wait, I better be careful with this. I, I'm not going to, I'll be very careful of the hood of this, or women, no, run away from this. Anybody who sees this, will, no, the Torah says you still, the Chachamim say, you still have to remove yourself from drinking wine. You have to be a Nazir for a certain time. The question is why? And the answer to that is connected to what we're saying now. And that is that 
there's a special Yetzirah that comes to the person. Especially Yetzirah comes to a person at that point, which is what? Li lo yikre. To me, it won't happen. But the moment the person sees that that lady explodes, right? The whole bed explodes, etc. What does the person who sees, what does he think? Ah, she didn't know how to do it properly. She wasn't careful enough. I know better. I can do, I can do, I still do it and nobody will catch me. Right? Nobody will catch me. This is how, yeah, that's how uh, every single thief thinks like that. They see how somebody stole from the bank and you see how they put them into prison. So if that's the case, why is it there's so many people with uh, thieves? Why are people so stealing all the whole time? What's, what's the logic behind this? The answer to that is that the thief says, I know better. I know how to do it in a way that nobody's going to catch me. I'll do this, I'll do this, I'll do that. But the other one didn't do. And because of that, he, the, the, because of this special Yetzara that came in, so then you have to remove yourself from wine. It's attack. You're now attacking this Yetzara that came into you. You have to, you have to do a Maase, you have to do something special in order to attack the, the new Yetzara that came in. So too, with this, with with uh, with um, Milchemet, Milchemet, um, Milchemet Halishut, and the Milchemet of Eretz Yisrael, the Eretz Yisrael is a mitzvah, like you said, very well said. You said it's a mitzvah, therefore the Yetzara should come. But nevertheless, we see that there's a process taking place. It's not like they said, okay, let's go to war. Okay, war, go war. It's a commandment. Okay, so there's Yetzara taking place. Okay. So, but there is a process before that in order to fight this Yetzirah that, we, that he has, which might be even, yeah, like you said, it might be even bigger Yetzirah. But the process that we're doing comes to weaken the Yetzirah that, that is coming in, right? And it will be coming in, right? Because this, has been, this obviously is done before. Okay, but very good point. Uh, okay, so basically we see that in order to fight the Yetzara, and this is what we see now, in order to fight Yetzara, we have to always add, and this is the whole idea of Elul, this idea of Elul as well, connecting to Elul. We have to understand that we've got, all of us have Yetzara, everybody has according to their level, we have our little, you know, little thing that's telling us, do this, do that, ah, I don't have to do this, do that, yeah. Uh, always always uh, pushing us the other way. Um, in thoughts, in Dibur, in Maase, everything, constantly, we're constantly attacked. We're constantly attacked. So we always have to do something in order to attack back in a nice way. It has to be, it has to be done in a very clever way, right? Because if Yetzirah comes and attacks, um, if you attack too much, right? Let me tell you, if you attack too much, if you become too much of a tzaddik, for example, you say, oh, it's Elul. Wow, it's Elul. I'm, I'm going to, from now on, I'm going to do Teshuvah. I'm going to wake up really early this morning, the, the morning, and say Selichot, and then go to Tefillah, and say every single word, and then do learn for 10 hours a day, and not speak Lashon Hara, I know this and that, I'm going to do this and do that. That person will fall. That person, after one, two months, whatever it is, he will fall. He will fall. Why? The Yetzara will not take it. And that's part of the Yetzara as well. The only way, the same way, the Yetzara will not tell you, put on the Gemara, the, the, the Gemara will not tell you, um, um, Shabbat, go, go, to, go today now and start driving in the middle of, of the car on Shabbat. You won't do that. Or do Avodah Zarah. Or just, yeah, the things which are crazy for you, anybody to, on their own level, right? You wouldn't do such a thing, for sure not. But we do see that people that were religious, they were keeping Shabbat. Now they're not keeping Shabbat. How come is it? How come? And the answer is, the Yetzirah, 
he chips little by little. He doesn't take the whole rock in one go. He chips the rock. He chips the yetzana, the, the yetzana tov. He chips the whole person, the, the, the idea. Little by little, he says, ah, do a little bit of it right now. It's not, the, it's not the end of the world. Do a little bit of this. <laughs> little, nothing happens. And, that, and yetzana has plenty of time. Plenty of time. He, he has no time limit. He, he, he has, you know, all your life to work on you. Until, his, until your last day. He doesn't have to do it when you're 15, 16 and pull you down then. No, sometimes he, do it, he does. But he has plenty of time. And therefore he will do it little by little. Always little by little. So it's a massive war. And the Yetzirah if he wants to change, if you want to change, you also have to do it in a, a little by little form. You can't do everything in one go. It's not good. Bichal not. The change has to be done little by little. And I thought, I thought to myself, I said, um, where, do we, where do we learn this? And I think we learn this as well from Briyat Olam, from creation. HaKadosh Baruch Hu created the world in six days. Seventh day, he, 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 yeah, he, he, he rested. Seven days. Why didn't he do it all in one go? He could have easily have done it all in one go. The answer to that, a few answers. One of them is that Agus Buhu wanted to teach us that we do things little by little. We don't expect, you can't, you can't um, build a, uh, a, a house in one day, can you? Of course not. You have to let the concrete settle, you have to do the foundation, little by little. You can't do everything, you can't, you can't do things in one go. Agus Buhu himself doesn't expect you to change in one day. Some people do try, and sometimes they fall. Unfortunately, they fall bad. You have to build yourself little by little. And this is the idea of the Yetzara, and the Yetzara Tov. And this is little by little. The whole world is created little by little, not in one go. Things which are done in one go, too fast, you do whatever, whatever you do, you do too fast, it doesn't go. You bake, bake something, you cook something. Too fast, it, it, get, it gets burnt, or it does, whatever, it doesn't go well. It doesn't go well. It, everything has its, its, um, its time uh, elements. Okay, so this is the idea of the Yetzara. Now let's do the last, you know, you know the last uh, thing. It's the Rambam. We all the Shomar, another answer. The Kushia Me'inkara later. Really, there's no question. We said it before. What's the difference between the Mechemet Harashot and Mechemet Chova, those two walls that in the Mechemet Rashud you can take the um, Yefat Toar and Mechemet Chova you can't. It's going to say now. The old Yeshoma de Kushia Meikara later. Shari Katam Rambam, the Rambam says, En Eshet Yefat Toar Muteret Ela Bishat Hashivya. The Yefat Toar is only permitted only at the time of capturing her. Okay, Shona, you know, you can't take her afterwards. Only the time of capturing uh, during the war, Mamashi Kacha. Veshata Shivya Hainu Lecha Milchama. Sorry, the, what does it mean, Shata Shivya? When you capture her, means right after the war. Dainu Lecha Haligata Yavim. After killing everybody, right? So so now they, you, you, you have already all these ladies, whatever it is, and you see something that you like, you take her. Vechen Women. Ve'ikita et kol zechora. The pasuk says, first you kill all the males, all the kenanim, chitim, mechule. Lefi charev, kill them with a sword. Ve'achar kach, rak anashim ve'atav ve'abeimah tavuz lach. Only the women and the children you can take for yourself if you want. Yeah, as a as a yefatwa. Obishma de bimechet shar ha'umot yeshar shivia. With with the war of of uh, of reshut, yeah, it's not chova, not ob, not an obligatory one, reshut, the one that you want to go for. You first you do what do you do? Yes, shat shivia, av benashim lachar ligat hazecharim. After killing all the males, so then you take for yourself the women that you like. Omnam. However, the war of the seven nations, which were the seven nations that were living 
at the time in Eretz Israel, in Sha'at Shivya Klal. There's no capturing. You cannot capture. You can't take prisoners, no prisoners. Ela bimamon, you can only take money. Velo benashim, you can't take women. Shad raba, mechu yavim lor gan. By the contrary, you have to kill them. You can't, you have to kill everybody. Umishumachi lo sheach sham yifat toa. There's no room, there's no room for yifat toa. So we see from here, the only thing that you can take in Mechemetz Chova, commanded by Hashem, the wolf commanded by Hashem, is money. The only thing you can take is spoils, the spoil, the money, whatever it is, yeah. But no, no, uh, no humans. Another understanding. There's in the Micha, it's especially there was only it was only once. So we, we can't do that now here in Eretz Yisrael, even though. Uh, for example, at the time when, when uh, the Six Day War and before that, when we started to kill, yeah, so the, the, we had many prisoners. We took prisoners. We took prisoners, even though it's Nechemet El Israel. Yeah, when, when they came to Medina, they came and they wanted to conquer the land, etc. Right? So, so there was no mitzvah, Kivyachol. That we have to come and kill everybody, all the Egyptians and all the Jordanians, etc. No, at that time there was only once, only, only the time of Yahushua bin Nun, not uh, 60 years ago. The order in Mechemet El Israel, he chova al kol Israel laro kulan. There's a mitzvah that we have to, we have, that we have to kill everybody. Ve'no biyado le'achayota, and there's no way of making her live you know there's no way of of uh, of um of taking her as as a as if at because others will come and kill her now you want to take her say for example you want to take you see something in the chemet ha in nc style you see i can i you like her whatever you want to take her in so you have to kill her you didn't kill her, somebody else will kill her for you. Uma shen ken, ma shen ken, besha milchamot, shalishun biyad kol echad ikach shevi umalkoar u lefashev benehem. So, as opposed to, says the, yeah, as opposed to, milchemet alishut, the milchamad that you want to go and you want to wage war against the, the Lebanon or Egyptians, whatever it is. That you take, you can take. Any woman that you want, you see. Kol echad likach shevi. You can take any captured thing that you want. Umal koach and any spoils of the war. Ulefasher benehem and to divide it equally between them, between all the soldiers, whatever it was. That's how it was at the time of, for example, in times of David Hamelech. Times of David Hamelech, there was milchemet alishut. But in Eretz Israel, it was Mechemet Chova, and therefore there was no Shivat Eretz. So this is this is um, yeah explains here the, the Zerushim Shon explaining the question that we said at the beginning. What's the difference between Mechemet Chova and Mechemet Reshut, obligatory and the non-obligatory um, wars? And what can you take? What you can't take? And why can't you take it? So Zav Hashem. Which we all already within the three days, the three days before the your site of a tzaddik or anybody is the neshama of that of that of that tzaddik is now in this yeah is, is still in, in this world now comes down three days before the day of the of the your site and three days later so the entire week. So we're now in the, within the three days. Within three days, tomorrow night it is already the yard site of the Zashim Shon, very, very special, Sadiq, and the Zad Hashem, the Zchut, the Zashim Shon, the Zchut, the Limuda Torah, and everything, the Zad Hashem, all the learning we've been doing for so long. The Zad Hashem would help us all, the Zad Hashem, and all of Amisael, to have a tremendous, beautiful year. Thank you, Chatumar.
חתימה טובה, צרו לבס, פרנסה טובה, בשפע וברכה, בנים ובני בנים עוסקים על תורה ומזרוע, שידוך Everything good is up to Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, with your permission. Um, number one, first of all, I want to welcome Zoltan Ackerman, who is joining us for the first time. Welcome. So, pleasure to have you with us. Um, also, just uh, as the Rav mentioned, tomorrow night is the is the Nachala. So obviously, if anyone wants to light a candle in memory um, of the tzaddik, please, please, please do so. Also, Wednesday night, as in every year, we're please God going to do a, a annual berachot party, where we will do after the shiur, we will all do berachot, and each one of us will say amen um, for the sechot of the of the mechaber. So if we could all please just prepare the berachot, mezanot, hagefen, haetz, she'akol and adama. And then please go out on Wednesday night after the shiur, we'll all do a small berachot party. I will also try question. and post it on the group. Sorry, quick question. Sir? Just, sorry, sorry, just a quick question. Thanks. Just tomorrow night, uh, light a candle in, in memory of Zara Shimshon. What, uh, should I do it in New York time or Israel time? New York, New York time. So I should do it tomorrow night, tomorrow, Ilal the 5th. Okay. Yeah. For right in your in your yeah yeah in your your place. I will write yes. on the group. I will write the full name of, of the mechaber of the rabbi. Right. So when you light the candle, you just remember to say lilur nishmat for 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 the um how do I say it in the lilur nishmat um elevation the, of the of the soul. Right. It's okay. Just elevation. say just just write down the lilur nishmat. Okay. Right, and you know we'll we'll know you know I'll I'll know I'll say a little okay. bit. I'll write it on the group with his full name. Thank you very much, Danny. No problem, Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you, Thank you very much. Amen. Thank you. Take care. Be well, Rabbi. Have a great night. Thank you. Okay.